the K2 Plus is massive, fast, and honestly, pretty affordable. On paper, this printer is an amazing deal, but is it really all it's hyped up to be, or is it just kind of a glass can, and is it just something that does nice things every once in a while, but kind of gets defeated pretty easily? I've had this machine for a few months now, use it for both personal and business-related stuff, so printing for myself and also for my Etsy shop. And the main reason I got it, build plate size. I wanted to print things that simply could not be printed on the bamboo printer. This is a gigantic Oreo cookie holder. This thing is huge, like massive. Not a single piece of this would have fit on the bamboo printer. Like just to show you, this is a P1S. This thing is nowhere, like maybe, nah, it's not even gonna, not even gonna fit in there at all. I printed this huge Cubone helmet. Honestly, I built it for my dog at first as a joke, but uh, yeah, this thing is awesome. It's so cool, again, not possible on a bamboo printer, just to confirm, not possible on a bamboo printer. And that's honestly been the coolest part about having this printer is not being able to say no to anything. I can literally print anything on this bed and scale it up to any size. There's not a single thing that I put on this printer that couldn't fit or I had to adjust slightly. Everything fits perfectly. And if anything, I always have more space than I need. Also, the quality on this thing has been excellent. This is just like a Godzilla toy I made for my nephew. And dude, like everything about it is perfect. There's some light stringing, but it's probably because I didn't dry out the filament, but man, this thing is awesome. I feel like I can't explain how good the quality is on this printer. It's just as good as Bamboo's quality. And honestly, I don't think you'd be able to tell the difference between the two. Almost forgot, sorry, I look like a mad scientist right now. Almost forgot there is, uh, I did two prints here, so one, with the X1 carbon, as you can see. So this is just using like Elegoo Blue, I think like Bamboo PLA and mostly stuff, but whatever. Came out great on the X1 carbon, no issues, right? And I did the exact same file on the K2 Plus. It's a little shaky, <laughs> a little shaky, we'll, we'll pull this down. Um, I did the exact same file on the K2 Plus, and all honestly, it's kind of dusty, but it came out just as good. The only big thing I found was that the K2 Plus had a little bit of different like flushing. You can see here, like there's some hue of a red here. I don't know, there was just some flushing issues where I think it probably could have flushed a little bit more than it did, but the K2 Plus came out great. I mean, K2 Plus versus X1 Carbon. You really, I mean, there's differences, but it's so not important. Quality-wise, it's just as good. There's no like major differences on these either. It's so clean. They, the backs came out super flat. No bed adhesion issues yet. Yeah, great quality great quality. The speed is also really good. Right now it's doing a first layer, so it's not super fast, but it's actually really good and it's really smooth and just as fast as a P1S, just as fast as an X1 Carbon. Closing that because it's kind of loud actually with the door open. The door closed, it's actually quieter than my X1 Carbon, but door open, it's, it's pretty loud. Also, sorry, the workshop is like an absolute mess right now. I'm currently getting rid of a bunch of shelving units, cleaning, and I also wanted to get this video out while I do all that, so keep that in mind. Now, honestly, my biggest takeaway with this printer is being able to basically print anything has been so freeing and just kind of creatively not having any ties or constraints has been awesome with this printer. I will say it definitely opens the door for just being able to make anything you want. Now, my biggest issue, the CFS, the, the CFS system is absolute garbage. I have lost more prints to the single CFS system than any of my four AMSs, bar none. Like no chances, no no competition. This CFS unit has made me lose so many prints. Now, not specifically this CFS unit because I did have a faulty board on my original one, which forced me to then get a replacement one. This replacement one is better. The other one was pure fails consistently all the time. This one's better, but the motors are super weak. I'm talking like if a spool is, is just like this, like halfway used it is it, it has a hard time pulling it back i'm constantly fighting with spools in this thing it's annoying as hell i've also had plenty of filament runouts i swap the filament roll with a new one and it just fails for whatever reason it doesn't start the print it starts it it says it's starting the print but then it doesn't actually do anything i have no idea also my ptfe tube broke I'll show you i kept this just for the video uh, my original ptfe tube broke if you can see it there so it snapped off and it just wouldn't hold the tube in anymore. Apparently this is a known issue. I've seen other people post like fixes and brackets to Creality Print. So I might try those. The replacement one they sent me is working. It's working okay, but we'll see. Another big thing, bed adhesion issues has been annoying as hell. 
I have the original PEI plate, I have an epoxy resin plate, and then currently in the printer I have a second PEI plate. Now, I don't know what's going on or what it is, but when I ordered the plate, it said, when I ordered this newest plate right now, which I'll touch on why I even ordered a new plate in the first place, my Wi-Fi is garbage, which I actually will touch on that in a second too. So I ordered a new PEI plate on Amazon, just because it would come faster, and it says an upgraded PEI plate. Let me, can you guys see that? It says upgraded plate. I don't know what that means if there's a new like version two PEI plate, if there's been a redone to the original one. I have no idea. I don't know what that means exactly. So I don't know. The new plate has been good. I was having very, very bad adhesion to flexies and kind of sensitive models on both the epoxy resin plate and the original PEI plate that came with the printer. But the new up upgraded one has been solid with no major issues. But, the, but then again, I've only had it for like two days, so. Also, Creality Print is some of the worst piece of software I've ever seen. If I load a model into it, even like a decently complex model, it freezes, it lags, it slows down, it crashes, it's horrible. I wanted to mention I've had nothing but native experiences with the like network sending stuff, but my Wi-Fi sucks. It could just be my Wi-Fi, in all honesty, it's causing that. But the Creality Print application on Mac OS is awful. It, should, it needs to be completely reworked. I've actually since moved to using Orca Slicer instead, and that's been really smooth, really good. No issues there. The only thing with Orca Slicer is I can only send it to the printer. I still have to start the print on the screen itself. I can't actually like send it directly and start it. And I think that's because the CFS system can't tell Orca Slicer which filaments are in which section. So I have to send it over here and then pick the filaments on the screen. So there's that. But the CFS unit, in my opinion, has added so much distrust to this printer that if there's ever a long multicolored print or print that I know I'm gonna use, like the, I'm gonna use a full spool, refill it, and that sort of thing, I will look to my bamboo printers first because they're more reliable, I can trust them, I can trust the system, the software more than the Creality system. I, I can't trust it with long-term prints that are a day plus that I need to swap filament rolls out of. I just can't. It's about 95% reliable. For the most part, there isn't any issues, but when there are issues, I'm like, damn, I should have just stopped playing games and used the bamboo printer instead. So there's that. Now, despite the issues, I really love this printer. I think this is a great printer to own. I would recommend you to buy this printer, but I would not recommend this as your first printer, and I would not recommend this, honestly, even as your main printer. It's just, there, there's too many unreliable factors in it that if this is my only workhorse printer, there's been at least with the PTFE tube issue, the CFS issue, at least maybe two weeks of ownership that I just couldn't print multicolored stuff reliably on this printer at all. However, considering the fact that I believe you can get this combo unit, the CFS and the K2 Plus for about $1,500 is kind of insane. Considering that the P1S combo is touching almost a thousand now, I think after the bamboo price hikes, it's gone up to like 800 ish, which is still not, you know, it's still about half the cost of this. But when you factor in the build plate size of this and how much that allows you to make. It's kind of insane. And then the X1 Carbon also pretty expensive. And then the only real comparable printer to this size wise is like the H2D, which I mean, that's pushing almost 2,500 at that point, a full thousand more than this printer. There are other competitor printers that I think are interesting, like the Prusa XL, but again, price way out of this printer's league. Um, there are some like, I think the Anycubic Cobra 3 Max or the new Anycubic one that can use the, the Ace unit. That one, there's a big size for that, but it's not enclosed, it's a bed slinger, so it's kind of a different style, but there's no printer that is 350 by 350, multicolor by a name brand that is under $1,700 that I could find that's as good as this printer. It's just, it doesn't exist. All right, so final closing thoughts on the Crowdy K2 Plus. Let me get out the way so y'all can see more of this. Got the Dyson in the back, no free ads. Overall complete conclusion of this printer, it's a great printer for the price. Would I recommend it? Yes, with the asterisk that it's not perfect. It does not have the bamboo reliability. It does not have the bamboo easeability in my opinion. There are some things that I found about this printer to be frustrating that you might find frustrating as well. However, if you're into 3D printing, if you want a big 3D printer, if you want a printer that has almost no constraints at all, this is a great printer. It's probably the best printer for the price in my opinion, other than like the Centauri Carbon because you could get four of those for one of these almost, or maybe five of those for one of these. I recommend picking this printer up under the knowledge that it's not perfect. And with that, I think it's a good printer to buy. I think it's a great printer to buy. I have used it for tons of my personal prints, but 
The one thing that I thought was really interesting that I want to touch on that's not part of the script for this video. This was my first large 3D print ever. It's an X-Men Sentinel, right? Super huge. I scaled it up to like 300% or something insane. Huge dude. I printed most of this on an A1 Mini. Everything except for the thighs, I think, are A1 Mini. The waist, torso, head, uh, arms, feet. Everything except for the thighs, I believe, were on the A1 Mini. That's kind of nuts. I think you can get creative with some of the smaller printers out there and really put work in and find interesting ways to make bigger things. I'll post the thumbnail here, but these people that made a full like cosplay suit, or not suit, helmet out of an A1 Mini. And man, I think while I can make huge things in one go like this, like this is so sick, but there's also this idea that like, do you need a huge printer like this? Unless you're absolutely printing huge things, probably not. But man, being able to make this in one go is just like, come on. Like, how do you say no to this? How do you fight this? This is insane. And then you have the big Oreo. Like, I always had to print this in top, middle, bottom. But man, this thing is huge. It's actually a full-size container that like opens and spins out. I'm not going to open it because it takes forever to open. But yeah great great printer um i recommend it this is a printer that i completely purchased myself creality does not pay me shit i actually did message them to get a review unit got completely ignored um so completely unbiased this is my own money here it's my own printer that i bought to use for myself and uh yeah um yeah so hope you guys enjoyed the video i got tons more stuff coming soon i want to do like a day in the life kind of vlog of the 3d printing business how it's going so far we got a lot of stuff going kind of give you guys a little hint here just did a pretty big upgrade to the filament walls you guys can see so maybe i'll uh touch on that in a second but yeah thanks for watching all the way to the end i do appreciate it and hope you guys have a good rest of your day peace